Hi, this is Peter Teuscher. I'm here with Toby Demker. Thanks for joining us for another podcast where we pick a topic and see where the conversation takes us. We look to have conversations that um, maybe inspire, inform, uh, and, uh, you know, educate people on, you know, personal development, business and professional development, and maybe even a little bit of philosophy. So how are you doing today, Toby? I'm doing well, thank you. <clears throat> Starting to enjoy the, uh, the, uh, the the warmth and the sunniness of, of summer, which is good. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's get, getting warm here as well. So, uh, I mean, I've just come back for a bit of a short vacation uh, in, the, in the sun anyway. So um, I, I, I'm all caught up there. But um, yeah, it's the that time of year, entering summer. And so... Um, I don't know if our, our my topic today is is fitting for the sort of summer vacation slowing things down mentality, but uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, cool. So today's topic, my turn for a topic. Uh, today's topic, I'd I'd like to talk about competition, and um, and you know, competition in terms of uh, you know, is it is it good for us? Does it does it bring out the best in us? Um, is it the right thing in organizations? Uh, is it the right way to, you know, for um, the world to operate? You know, I do seeing each other and and, and seeing um, things from a perspective of, of competition. Um, you know, if you go back to the very, you know, the the ideas of um, of Darwin, you know, the the survival of the fittest and uh, you know, competition of different species for survival and so on that, you know, from that perspective there, you know, competition seems to be very, very fundamental to, to life and to nature. Um, I, I kind of tend to see it from a different perspective and I'd like to explore that with you today. Um, okay. and, and I think from, from even from individuals, uh, and from organizations, I'd really like to talk about that as well. You know, what's healthy about competition, what are some of the drawbacks and, and we can take it from there. So, um, so from your perspective, what's your, you know, within you've worked in organizations, you've got kids in sports, you've got, you know, we, we both have sort of a sports background. Um, how, how do you see competition? Do you see healthy aspects, not so healthy aspects? What do you, what do you think of it? Yeah, well, I definitely see both. Um, I mean, when you, when you mentioned the word competition, I, immediately start thinking about, well, what are the good sides and what, what are the bad sides? And I think there's a lot of good sides and, and there can be certain drawbacks to it as well. But if we start with the positives, I mean, I think I get really, for me, it's it's helpful to be in competitions in terms of, that I can set up objectives, I, I know what I want to develop, and I can enjoy them. You know, it's um, it's it's really fun to co compete on certain things, you know, if the, um, if you're if you're playing a game and somebody says, "Oh, now it's a competition," then it becomes a little bit more exciting, and you know your endorphins or something might might start to circulate a bit faster. Um, so I think there's a there's a great fun aspect in terms of uh, goals, development, achievement, um, participation. Um, but then, of course, that it's the aspect of winning, uh, which is great. Uh, I mean, it, it can be great to win, but that can also be uh, kind of a dark, dark side of competition sometimes because there, there, you know, there obviously can't be more than one winner. Mm. Uh, so, and if that's the only focus, then I think it can be a, a bit detrimental. So, if, I mean, if I participate in a in a marathon. I have no expectations whatsoever to win, so I don't care about, very much about that. But I might set up a goal for myself that I want to beat my own record or I want to be, beat a certain pace. And that's um, I'm competing against my, myself and I'm enjoying you know, the volume of, of, of the masses and, and trying to get energy from that. Yeah. Um, so for me, I mean, saying that mostly positives, but there are some negative aspects to it as well. Okay. Well, I mean, the way I see competition, um, you know, if, uh, you know, when you talk about having a winner, I, I, you know, I'm a big believer in finding a win-win, whether it's negotiation or any kind of, uh, you know, I don't believe in the sort of game theoretical, you know, that there's, there's, you've got to win, so someone else has to lose so you can win. 
I think there there is always some benefit in every experience and interaction, uh, and I, I, that's the way I approach life. That's that's part of my life philosophy. Um, mm-hmm. I think th- I, I do recognize that the areas of life where competition is is beneficial. I mean, I, I notice the difference in myself when I play basketball when it's just training. And even within training, there's some level of competition. But then you put a referee on the court, and you know, and you compete against, and and it it does um, something to your motivation and to your drive and to your to your focus. I, I can I can see all the benefits there and, and ways to to motivate. And and I think um, you know, I've having you know gotten years ago my certification as a coach. There's there's lots of debates around, even with kids, at what point is it healthy to have a competition, um, and and sort of the European coaching model. With the, this is we looked at us at, at ice hockey, for example, and they, yeah. the, why are European players, uh, you know, in terms of skills, more developed than a lot of some some Canadian players, and and the reason was, you know, the, the competition, the games started much later in life, and they worked on fundamentals and and. Just, just playing and having fun um, for a longer period in their mm-hmm. youth. So, so there's that element. Um, I think in life, uh, you know, the, you're only really in competition with yourself and who you were yesterday. So it's always I try to look at it in terms of, um, you know, when when I look at who I'm, where I'm trying to go, and I I'm I'm measuring myself against. We always make comparisons to our peers and the people around us, but I, I try to look at. You know, where was I? How far have I come? Where do I want to go? And, and that's so I, I try and focus a lot of the uh, what I'm competing against is, is myself. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, seeing everything in, in terms of on a, on a competitive level, I, I think you can see some of the negative sides when you're when you've got kids that compete against each other. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't always bring out the best in people. Um, and so I think there, like you say, there's there's good and bad sides. I, I think a really interesting point was made. I was listening recently to um, Peter Thiel is one of the original founders of PayPal, him and Elon Musk and I think a couple of others. And uh, so he, he was talking about um, about competition and he he doesn't think it's a good thing because, you know, when he uh, the competition, in his view, it it's and I think this is a relevant point, it depends on what you're competing for, right? So in his view, there's often you're competing for the wrong things. And so um, I think he was, he studied to be a, a lawyer. And so there was, and it was this competition with everyone who, you know, who could, uh, in, in terms of the career and where you're trying to get to. And uh, and so it, it totally took his focus away from what he really wanted to do. And um, and look, don't quote me on the lawyer thing. It might have been something else he was working on. But, but the thing is, I, I think you know when society tells us, or or when certain organizations we're in tell us, this is these are the this is what we're competing for. Um, that can you know that can get you away from what you're trying to achieve. And I think that's a really important thing. And you can see that in society when. You know, it's all about cons- consuming, and and there's people who want to drive the nicer car, have the better vacation. Um, you know, I mean, there are literally people out there, men, for example, who are you know, um, it's it's a competition with with people who's who's got the most beautiful partner or whatever. I mean, these are all very superficial elements of competition that I think can have a, a negative impact. And then I've also I've worked in an organization. I've seen organizations where different departments are put in competition with each other. Um, and I, I think that um, instead of creating this teamwork and maybe in their divisions or in their departments, they, they created more uh, by being in competition with other departments. They created more um, cooperation and interaction. But sort of in terms of what are the goals of the organization, time to get lost for what are the individual team goals or whatever. And so these are the kind of things that I think it's important to be aware of uh, when when you place competition at, as, a, as a really high level of importance. Um, so I know I've focused a little bit more on the negative side, but you know I think that's that's the the part to recognize 
you know, what are you competing for? Is, is, is that mm. really what you want, you know, in terms of your values and your goals? Are you competing yeah. for the right things? And mm. does competition bring out the best in you and the best in the people around you? I think those mm. are some of the fundamental questions that are important to ask when you're looking at competition and whether it's appropriate and important for, mm. you know, for, for an organization, for you as a person and, and so on. Because not everybody responds well to competition. It, it's not, mm. I, I always, when I, when I see things like art and music competitions, uh, you know, mm. th that's very subjective. And it, 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 I don't know if it really fosters high creativity, you know? Um, mm. So, yeah. So what do you think about those points? Yeah, no, I, I mean, to the last point, I agree. I mean, I, I have very, I have issues with sort of art and uh, more, more music competitions, I would say, because I'm, I'm, I, I guess I know more, more about music than art in general. But yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, what's the point? Uh, or what's the purpose? Can I, can I play with more feel than you or faster than you or, or with more soul than you or with better technique or more uniqueness or what is it that we're actually you know going to be what's going to be the benchmark so but that's one issue but yeah i mean to your point i think i i agree and i think in in some ways what you're saying is that we have that the prospect of, of winning or not winning that that is a big part of the issue and i think that's an element where where i totally agree like is i, I in general as i said i think maybe competition is good um, but winning necessarily is not, if that takes over, then it's not good. Like if that's the only thing that we're competing for to win, then it can be, yeah, as you said, I mean, there are classical examples of, of departments that are competing against each other. So that's going to diminish the collaboration for the, per, for the common objective, for instance, then, then co winning is not the, the 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 main thing, but you know how can we f find ways to become faster or or find new per perspectives or find uniqueness in the market or if you can if it can help you to dif differentiate yourself and find your unique point, I think that there's a great value. But then it's also something about learning to lose that I think it's more on the. On the personal side, and um, I've mentioned it a few times that I'm <clears throat> I'm a big fan of tennis, but that's one thing that I really um, appreciate with tennis, that most people, the, the vast majority of players, they will lose much more games than they actually win. Um, and how do you deal with that? You know, and, and it's just in, from the organizational point of view, you know, what, how can you um, learn to f fail fast? What can you, how can you, with that growth mindset in, in, in mind, how can you lose but still feel like, hmm, this can make me better? Uh, how can that build your resilience to bounce back to uh, to want to develop yourself further? And there's a certain motivation, a lot of learnings in that, I think. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the growth mindset because I think that plays a big role. Um, because, they're, you know, they're, especially when I think about kids and young people trying to f find out who they are or... Or, or what they're good at and this you know you, you get you know you start to compete against other people and and there's different stages of development like you know kids develop at different ages I don't need to tell you that as a parent and and so when when you you have a, a competition at an early age or you have competition in an area where some people might have some more transferable skills relating to to something new that they're doing than other people and they go well compared to that person you know i'm not very good so i must not be good at that right mm -hmm. and so so that's where i come back to well it, you know the growth mindset is i'm not good at it yet and if i apply myself and practice enough i could get good at it um right. i could get good at anything if i have the motivation and the desire to do it and so um, because, the, you know, I find I come across more people with a fixed mindset of, well, I'm, I'm good at these things. I, I'm, you know, uh, and, and I don't think I'd be very good at this. And um, as opposed to people with the growth mindset of, yeah, well, you know what? I, I want to do this and I don't know how to do it yet, but I'm going to learn and I'm going to develop. Unfortunately, that's not a very widespread uh, mentality. And so when you add the element of competition, to that, um, especially when trying new things, um, 
you're, there, there are some people that are, are quick, quick learners. They're very tactile or they just, just different. They, they have a skill set that's more conducive to certain situations. And then when you add competition, then you immediately think, well, yeah, I suck at this. But yeah. th there, are, there are other, there are people who are late bloomers. There are people who, you know, uh, Michael Jordan comes to mind who, who, you know, and it is arguably the greatest player to have ever played basketball. Um, and yet he didn't make his, he, one of the years he didn't make his high school basketball team and, and, and so on. And there's different versions of that story. But I, I think there, there are plenty of people where you have these examples of, they, they they failed at an early age, and if if they just looked at their competitive set, um, the people around them, and got discouraged, and we would have missed out on some really great people, right? And so th that's when you when you're when you're competing against yourself versus competing against others. I think it just gives you a healthier perspective on, and 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 it really advocates for a growth mindset more than anything else. And that that's yeah. something I think it's really important to emphasize. Yeah. No, I think I mean, the, the more you're speaking about it, the more I think about that's the, really the key question about what are you competing for? Mm. So what, what is the game that you're in and what's the end game? I mean, if um, my dad used to say as a joke, you know, whoever has the most toys when he dies, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a f funny take on it. But then, yeah, what are you, are you competing to be the best parent you can be? Are you competing to be the best uh, leader that you can be? Are you the... What, or as you frequently talk about, you know, are you competing to be the best version of yourself? But then you're competing with yourself. So what, what, is, what is the game that you're in? What is it that you're trying to win, really? Or what are you com competing for? Yeah, um, well, uh, as Simon Sinek would say, I'm, I'm in the infinite game, uh, the never-ending game. You know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm in this, this game where I'm com continuing to you know, compete with myself and grow and, and 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 never really hit the finish line because it, it you know the the um you know the the it's the the journey not the destination sort of thing but um i you know i think that the there are there are contexts where where um competition does take us f uh further and then there are, are contexts where um where i'm not sure it does and, and to, to ask well for one the, the he with the most toys at the end wins is exactly what I'm talking about when people are you know looking have all these external kind of goals and um, you know it, it's about accumulating things rather than knowledge experience you know so I agree with you it's 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 what do you want to measure yourself against and, and what's the goal going to be um, and but I don't know that a lot of people think about that um it's it's people rise to the occasion uh, oh, oh competition I, I this isn't what i was going to compete for but now that you've offered me the game i'm gonna jump in there right and then mm -hmm. you kind of get distracted from from what it is that you want um and 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 in the heat of competition you, you know are you sacrificing some of your values some of yourself you know and and it's it does it bring out the best in you to to compete um, and I, I think th that's that's where I, I sometimes question whether too much focus on competition is, is the right thing. And I, yeah. we, we compete with each other. You see kids do it, but adults do it. And, and it's interesting what things, what does our drive for competition reflect about the certain area of focus, right? So um some people will say i don't you know i'm not good at, at trivial pursuits and quizzes so i don't i'm not going to worry about that but when it comes to people start talking about their career and uh, th there will be people that get really competitive it's like well i've done this and i've done this and here's um and then there's other people who go well i'm not really worried about that i'm more interested mm -hmm. in you know I can tell, I can show off how much I know or whatever. And I, I, there's one, one situation that comes to mind where I was kind of not expecting it. Um, but I, when I, when I traveled years ago to India, I went to this, uh, I decided to check out an ashram for two days and this, at in this ashram, you know, there was some people who dressed a certain way. The only requirement was that you wear light clothing to go to the meditation. Um, and which mm -hmm. I did, but I, I wore, you know, light almost white pants and a white t-shirt and uh but other people who wore the kind of you know the the more traditional garb they uh I, I, the, you know that you would notice that people 
And even you hear people commenting, and I, I've never felt more judged than in that environment of these supposedly mm-hmm. spiritual people who you wouldn't expect to be competitive, but you could actually be competitive on I'm more spiritual than you are, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and and so those are the, the kind of negative aspects that I'm kind of trying to highlight. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. No, but I think um, I mean more more on the positive sides. Then, if I if I bring up that, I think it's it's uh, it can be very helpful to for you to think about how you can adapt to certain situations, right? Um, I mean, if there's a competition, there, there, you mentioned focus. Then that if if there's a competitive situation, typically you you focus a little bit more, so you can zoom in and now I'm really going to focus on this. And that can be there. There's a lot of positive elements for that, but then also identifying if you're in a competition. So how can you adapt to to the situation? So again, I'm going back to tennis all the time, but I think it's just a good metaphor. So if you're if you're you're playing a a player who's really a, you call a pusher that that just pushes back the ball all the time, it's really frustrating to play against these players because whatever you give them they sort of just bring it back very slowly so it's very difficult to hit a winner so then how can you adapt to that situation how can you make yourself more versatile to adapt your game in able to to win win the competition um and i think the mindset here is so important so what is if, if you're in a competition with what mindset are you are you in are you in it only to win it, or are you are you in it to enjoy it, or are you in it to, to develop, or are you in it to, to perform at your best, the best that you can possibly be? Um, I mean, and I'm not going to judge what is better here, but there's a lot of different mindsets that you can adapt entering a comp- competitive environment. Um, and I think a lot of them are, can be very, very positive, actually. Mm. Yeah. I. Mm. I, I I agree, and I think this takes us back to the whole conversation around getting like peak, peak performance and getting into the flow state. Um, and you know the the two the two aspects that are super critical to flow are um, something's got to be challenging enough so that um, you, you know so that you're not bored uh, and you 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 remain interesting, but it can't be too hard so that you know it, it, it's insurmountable you know when you when you compete against someone who's you know uh 10 times better than you it, you're not it, you know your your desire to be the best you can and try and compete it, for most people is not going to be there because it's mm-hmm. a foregone conclusion you're going to lose and, and so on so um so it's, it's something that's interesting and something challenging um so it, it's just like bj fogg talks about the having the you know the the its ability and and um, desire or interest. I think when you when you really when you have high motivation, you really want to get something done, and so you have your the right level of skill and the right level of motivation. I think that uh, if I remember his model correctly, that that's that's kind of how you find that peak level of motivation, and I think when you have competition it can bring it can bring that out in you just having the right level of competition with the right competing for the right things right having the right goals and choosing the right people to measure yourself against or the right people to compete against just like with yeah. kids you don't you know you wouldn't want to uh, have a, a beginner you know necessarily go up against someone who's intermediate or advanced right they would get discouraged discouraged fairly quickly so yeah. um so yeah, I, I do understand how, and I definitely I notice it myself, uh, and I see it in other people. When we have competition, it can bring out the best in us. It can, uh, it, it can, um, you know, raise our level of focus and our determination, and um, allow us to take take get to places that we might not have if there wasn't that kind of pressure of competition. Um, mm. And uh, and so then we have to go back to you know. Um, what are we what are we competing for and is that in in alignment with what I'm trying to achieve in sports competition makes sense um, at, at levels when people are already proficient at what they're doing 
Um, mm. And it can be taken to levels where I think it's unhealthy, but uh, for the most part, I think comp- competition is great. And you know, I love. We just had the NBA finals. You know, the the oh, yeah. the mm. National Basketball Association in the U.S. had uh, you know, and and to see people performing at that level is amazing, right? And um, that is competition, but it's competition that uh, at a very good level. Um, you know, and, and it's very clear what people are trying to achieve and, and so on. And people make a lot of sacrifices, right? So, so as you're competing for things, um, what, what are you sacrificing to give you all that focus, to give you all that energy that you're putting in uh, and not putting somewhere else, right? And so mm-hmm. using that as a metaphor for your life, when you get so wrapped up in competing with what your neighbors are doing uh, or how they're doing, and you know it, it can it can affect uh, your your what you're focusing your attention on, and some people get really competitive that way, um, mm. and and for, for all the wrong things. Um, mm. So so that's what I really encourage people to reflect on and think about. Um, it, whereas when you go back to competing against yourself and um, trying to th- always have that personal growth mindset and. Um, and you know, trying to develop yourself further in different areas, I think that's that's the way. That's where I I like to keep that in perspective. Um, mm. the, the one side helps your motivation and your focus, and I think it's done in certain conditions can be great. But for the most part, I think it's remembering that at the end of the day, you're only competing against yourself. Yeah. And I started thinking about another aspect of it as well, and it's more on the organizational level and the strategical level of how, uh, you know, certain organizations, they might uh, utilize, or they, well, first of all, they in their strategies, they, they might go for, oh, we need to win market share, or we need to win in volume or profitability. So again, what are you competing for? What is it that you're actually measuring? And then I think that can be inspiring and it can be good for, for the population to have uh, that common objective or the common goal to, you know, that this is what we're fighting for. And then we can see clear, clearly black and white if we've been uh, successful or not. But that's the uh, the result goal. So that's, and there's a lot of things that can be have an impact on, on the results. So if that's the only thing, that can be a big problem. I mean, if we're performing great and we're still not winning, you know, maybe there are other aspects that we, that are out of our control, for instance. So. It, it, it should never be I, I don't think that winning should always be the only the only thing as you say in sports I mean it, it, that's what makes it exciting to watch I guess <laughs> many times yeah. so it's, it, it's different aspects of it but then also for a lot of organizations how they utilize um, internal competition in in a strategic way so I have a few clients that they have they have actually different brands within the the whole within the organization that are competing against each other. But the common the, the common market share is uh, is in the interest of the organization. But then and then they can utilize the synergies and try to to divide uh, the the areas in terms of data sharing and, and client knowledge, etc. So, but that becomes a really difficult balance, you know, to how to to what extent. Uh, can you compete and to what extent can you actually collaborate and that be, that can it's a fine balance of how to make that uh, fruitable for the for the whole organization but that's really when you're stepping up on the on a, on the balcony and looking at the overall market situation actually right? yeah yeah uh, no absolutely I, I think that um, when I think about you know is competition, getting us where we want to be and obviously when the, the th- you don't want stagnation you don't want people the, the good thing about a competition whether it be in the like in the free market system i think competition is good if you have people with monopolies uh, things get stagnant things get com- people get complacent if there's no there's no pressure of competing with other people sometimes um, you know, you're not getting the you're not getting the most out of people and situations. So, I fully acknowledge and acknowledge that. So, you know, the, the co- companies who have a monopoly and there's no pressure for them to change or evolve and get better because there's no one to compete against. And I, I don't think is a is a good thing either. But then on the other hand, 
when you look at there's there's people with who've become very wealthy who then who still don't get enough of you know there's there's billionaires who who compete with each other on the size of their bank account who's on the top 10 list of richest people and and then there are people who are, are extremely wealthy but then use the well some of them it's it, it, they're they strive for power and control but then there are other people who focus on philanthropy or how do i make a real difference in the world um and and how do i create positive change um and and so it becomes to you know i when i think about um two really rich people that come to mind are like jeff bezos uh with amazon and uh and elon musk with tesla right so so i from the outside people who seem to be driven by fairly different um, motivations. And even though, you know, I, I disagree with, there's plenty of things when I, when I, uh, that I hear Elon Musk say, I, I feel like he's genuinely not motivated by the financial aspect of it because he's put all of his fortune on the line many times for what he believes in, what he, um, you know, and, and, you know, I don't, I don't know that getting people to Mars is the most important thing for humanity. Um, so, and, and th there's plenty of geopolitical things that he said that I don't agree with, but I think in terms of his motivation and what he competes on, it's, it's really on, you know, always, I've, I've heard people who've worked for him talk about how he's probably the most driven person they've ever met in the world sort of thing. And and so so, I where does his where does his drive come from? Does it come from competing with other billionaires or other car makers, or other people in different industries? I, I don't know. I think, you know, my impression is that the that the drive comes from this constantly improving, getting better, and and achieving a goal. Um, so so when I look at that kind of a person. Uh, whether you agree with their their goals or not, you you see a certain type of motivation, and then you see other people where it's you know, have I got more than my peer group? Have I got more than and mm. and and so that kind of competition is again, and I think there we go back to are we are we measuring ourselves against the right goals? Is is that really what we want to be competing for or competing about? You know, um, mm. so I I think that's where it all comes back to when we think about. Um, is competition good or not? It's. I think it really comes back to that um, that question of what are we competing for? You know, um, mm. you know when when it, when you think about hi, the, our history and the amount of money and lives that have been lost uh, in wars, what were we What were the, what were people competing for? Right? Yeah. Um, because war, I guess, is a, a a nasty form of competition, and mm. and and, it, and so not stopping to ask those questions, I think, is where we is a big downfall, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm really taking away that that notion of competing with intent or competing yeah. with purpose. You know, what what is what is the what's the game you're in, and what is that is that you want to take away. Um, it made me reflect on the, the there's something called uh, uh, equ equity theory or something like that. That where, where I mean, you can say that you your uh, wealth has increased by fifty percent in the last five years, and you're pretty pretty satisfied with things. But then you figure out that everybody else has increased with a hundred percent, and all of a sudden you feel like you've lost. Mm. <laughs> but you've actually got it so much better. But then, so it's just what what is the perspective with uh, against compared with others? Yeah, that's that's a really interesting point because when they measure poverty today, um, you know, th there's this sense of when you look at poor people today, the things that they have compared to poor people 100 years ago, you know, you've got poor people now that may have uh, a microwave, they may have a refrigerator, they, they may have things that 100 years ago were considered absolute luxuries, right? Yeah. Um, or maybe a little more than 100 years ago. But look, I don't, I, off the top of my head, don't, can't picture you know what the 1920s were like um in terms of well they probably didn't have microwaves but yeah no we, not we no microwaves <laughs> but did everybody have a fridge i don't think so i think they also no. you know so 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 you know um so, so a lot of people the the standard overall standard of living has gone up but um relative poverty has you know the gap seems to have widened so mm. the you know the people who are really wealthy and then and then people who are um, sure you have things to survive, but 
it's about relative po poverty. And um, I think that's a really interesting term. Um, so uh, when you translate that to, um, you know, what, going back to what are we com competing for? What, what are the measurements? Uh, what are the metrics we're, we're looking at? Um, you know, that, that, that what are you, what are you basing, um, what do you, what are you basing the, the comparison on? I, I think is a, an important one because, you know, sometimes, some things are just all relative and then some things are really meaningful in terms of the, you know, com, you know, competing, um, classes, competing groups, uh, and, and how you evaluate if people are growing at a, if, or the impediments to growth and, and is it a fair playing field, you know, in terms of competition, um, as you know, as the, if, you know, there's more con consolidation in the world, um, with bigger and bigger corporations, you know, is that, what's that doing to competition? Uh, what does that do for consumer choice? What does that do for our level of innovation? And um, are, are we focusing when when profit and shareholder value becomes the ultimate uh, goal that people are competing for? Um, you know, is that getting you know the best results that we that, that we want and need in the in the mm -hmm. world, rather than being the most innovative? And th this is one of the things when I think about Apple's you know purpose and vision. Uh, if I remember correctly, you know, they, they want to be, they wanted, um, they wanted to, uh, challenge the status quo, right? So that, that was mm -hmm. kind of their vision. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so how many companies still, I don't know if Apple still lives that vision, right? So, so mm -hmm. again, these are, these are the elements where it's, uh, I, I, I acknowledge that reducing, um, com competition in, in those areas as, you know, groups get more powerful, companies get more powerful, and competitions reduce. That I think has a net negative effect on society and on on development in general. So, um, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the geo geopolitical situation, if you you mentioned wars before, but if if the competition for for geo geopolitical power is the main main purpose, then we're in, we're in for a pretty bad run. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So. So anyway, so to maybe just reflect quickly on what is it, you know, that is good about competition and what is, is it that that is a drawback? I think, you know, what, what would you say? What, what you're, you're sort of the, 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 the top couple of points for and against and and the what what are the kind of the determining factors? What, what would you how would you summarize that? Mm, well, I think what, what I'm taking away is really that there's something about sort of intentional or purposeful competition. So <clears throat> that we talked about, like realizing what game are you in, what are you playing to, what are you competing about? Uh, um, and then also the, the mindset that you're entering a competition with. So what is it that you, is it, is it winning or is it learning or is it development or, or whatever it is? Uh, and then... It's also that part that winning can be, or, or competition can be very entertaining, uh, mm -hmm. but if the if the if the means or if the end is only about winning, then, uh, yeah, it's entertaining, but it's not the, you know, what what's the, what's the final line, you know, if I mean even if if I win the World Cup right now, I mean. What what is the game? Is it winning as many World Cups as possible, or is it getting into the World Cup? Or you know, it's and you can play a fantastic game of football and you're completely dominant in the whole game, and you can still lose it. And you, it's not necessarily that winning is the only thing, right? So what are you? Yeah, how, it's it's the mindset. Is it about the only the result, or are there other things about the performance, the learnings, etc.? So yeah, the mindset is really important. Mm. So as as a coach, you know, I'm always trying to help people achieve their highest potential. And so, um, is that done through competition? Uh, is that, or are there other ways to achieve it? And so, I agree with you. I think the, the what it comes down to asking yourself a couple of questions is on an individual level: is competition the right thing for me? Does does that motivate me? Does that drive me? And uh, and then contextualizing that so obviously 
in certain situations, competition will be, it will get you motivated. It will drive you. It will uh, push you beyond your comfort zone um, in, in the right situations. Um, so it, it, is, is, it, is it healthy for me as an individual? Is it the right thing f- for, our, for an organization? Right. I think those are the things. And then the other piece about knowing what you're competing for and, and does that align with your, you know, your, your values and the things you're trying to achieve? Because if you're competing as an individual for who drives the nicer car, has the better vacation, has the bigger bank account, th- those are not going to contribute to your happiness, right? Whereas mm. uh, if you're competing on um, who's the happiest, you know, you've got these the, the global statistics on the happiest countries, um, you could compete on that, but h- how do you measure it? Because what makes one person happy doesn't, you know, doesn't serve the other, doesn't yeah. necessarily motivate the other person. And, and it's kind of like comparing art or music, you know, it's very subjective. Is, is, a, is a happiness competition going to get people really motivated? Uh, I don't know, right? So, so uh, just knowing what, what, like you say, knowing the game you're playing, but knowing what you're competing for and then making sure, is that, that the right, uh, to, to Peter Thiel's point, is it the right thing that I want to be focusing my energy on? Just because there's a competition and it gets, it drives me and, and it, maybe it even distracts me from what I really want, right? Mm. So, so contextualizing it. So, yeah, I think those are really important things. So if you're in an organization, you know, where is competition appropriate? Where is it helpful? Uh, and where is it destructive? Where does it not mm. bring people together? Uh, you know, the, sometimes periods of crisis are what bring communities together more than anything else. And there mm. it's not about competition. It's just about survival or it's just about exactly. overcoming hardship. Um, mm. And uh, so there's not a one size fits all, I think, is the is kind of from our conversation, what I'm kind of summarizing. And, um, mm. and, and I think there's a time and place for everything. Um, mm. So I I'd, I'd encourage people to take away and, and think about where they apply competition in their life uh, and where it benefits them and doesn't. And is competition in your life distracting you from other things that are more important? Because the people who climb the corporate ladder and are trying to, you know, you, you know, compete for each other for, for positions and status and so on. And then at the end of the day, what have you sacrificed? You know, is it your family life? Is your is your health? Um, mm. Is it your happiness uh, or all of the above, right? So, mm. so the, it has its costs. Competition definitely has its costs. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, I think th- those are the the kind of the takeaways, and that, those are the important things I think people um, can can think about and reflect on when it comes to because it's funny we we started uh, during COVID started playing more board games and and mm. now there I've discovered a whole there's there's games that you play as a team to get a result. You're not competing yeah. against. There's board games, and I always thought of board games as you're always playing against other players. Yeah. yeah. But there are board games where you now where you actually as a group you have a common goal, and I think that's yeah. a really great sh- mental shift in terms of you know developing stuff that brings people together and teaches cooperation rather than it's me against you sort of thing. And so yeah. And and that and both games can be fun. And both yeah. games can do positive things. So I think at the end of the day, what we've both kind of agreed on is positive. There's good and bad to competition, and you just need to think about it in, in from different perspectives. Yeah, I mean, everything isn't a competition. No. Uh, and uh, it's uh, I guess for some people, it's easy to get in that mindset, like I have to I have to win or whatever. But yeah, then. It's been a really interesting conversation to reflect on that. So, what is it that you're competing about? What game are you in, etc. Um, and there's also something about the. I mean, achievement can be an extremely powerful motivator. Right? Mm-hmm. So, the sense of achievement. I know that is for me. So, utilizing that in a in a competitive matter. But then it's more about achievement for myself. It's on, but exactly. it's more about how you who are you comparing with. Right? So, yeah, I, I for and me. Finally, I just thought there sure. is. Um, there's a book called uh, The Inner Game of Tennis. Oh, uh, I know it. Tim, T- yeah, Tim you know, Galloway. Yeah, yeah. He's one yeah, of the, the OGs yeah. of coaching. He uh, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's, he has a really 
interesting take on i mean using t- tennis as a metaphor but also competition and, and various parts of it so that maybe that's a recommendation for anyone who's interested yeah and, and if tennis isn't your game he's got a whole series he's got the inner game of golf the inner game of skiing oh, yeah. uh, the inner game of work um so so there's a whole variety of uh of versions of that uh con- that that ideology which i think is really good and i you know it's one of the first books that I read when I was, you know, I mean, he's been around so, so long. Um, so, but I, I think maybe to, to, to finish off, there's, there are areas in, in life where, you know, we've talked about the pros and cons and, um, you know, there's, there's places, um, you know, places where competition is good, but I think, and, I, and maybe I've touched on where competition maybe isn't so healthy, healthy, but, you know, there are some, areas in life where I think competition definitely is not, um, is, is, is not going to achieve what I, is not going to help me achieve what I want. And one thing that comes to mind where there is a lot of competition and I don't think it's necessarily a healthy thing is, um, you know, people uh, who are uh, competing for a mate competing for another person right when i think about yeah. you know uh, I, I went on a on as i said on a bit of a vacation then you observe people and young people at the beach in there you know and and uh, and you kind of uh, you almost see this level of, co- of competition you know of if people aren't if there's a, a group of people and they're not uh, you know, you you get you get people competing for social status, but also competing for the attention of you know the opposite sex or you know the the person you whose affection you desire, and that's one area for me that I realize if if I have competition, I don't think I want to compete for someone's affection and and love and and interest. For me, and this is my philosophy, people can disagree, but I, I think, and I know from a biological perspective, there's, you know, you know, women are psychologically on a, or on a biological level looking for the best possible mate to reproduce and men are looking for the best possible female partner to, you know, to create offspring. So on a fundamentally biological level, I I can get that, but we're we're more than our biology, hopefully. Um, but for for me, if there's if if it's not mutual, if someone doesn't have the same level of interest in me as I have in them, and doesn't have the la- same sense of connection and and so on, then I don't think it's I wouldn't you know the competition isn't the right thing for me in that situation. Um, so you know, and I remember when I was younger and. Uh, you, you, they're, they're, you have a attractive young woman, and there's multiple guys that you know are interested in her. And and if you see that as a as a competition, I for me that's not a healthy thing. For me, it's I'll put myself out there. If she wants me, uh, great. And if not, then then there will be someone else who is a better fit for me, maybe. Um, and so I don't know what you think about that, but in 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 the sort of uh, looking for a life partner, looking for a mate. Uh, uh, what do you think? Is that is that health competition a healthy thing, or is it uh, is a destructive thing? No, I, I mean I think it's very very personal. But first of all, I mean looking at, I haven't been on the dating market for, for a long time. But <laughs> but it, when I think back of uh, of those times, I mean if you if you treat it as a competition. Uh, you know, there's. It, it might, maybe it's fun. It sounds really tiring, but I don't think it's going to be very fun. But then, if if you're treating, you know, how many dates you can have, or how many women, or how many men as 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 trophies or whatever, yeah. then it's not going to be very very sustainable. And not very fulfilling, uh, uh, you know, no, endeavor no. either. So yeah, um, maybe it can it can be fun for a while, but um, I don't know. It's uh, it's nothing. Not been my my thing. Um, mm. And and on sort of on an emotional level, then so because I, I I've seen this in families, you know, kids competing for the affection of their parents. You know, I've got friends with with four kids and um, you've got two. Is there ever competition between your your kids to get more attention, to get more affection, to get... Uh, what, what's that like in your family? It's an inter- interesting question. I No, I don't think there is. Um, uh, I, there might be pockets of it at certain times if there's a certain, uh, certain situation where you feel like you've been... Uh, 
mistreated or unfairly unfairly treated perhaps maybe there's a certain element of that perhaps but but i think i, I think i mentioned that before like how in in parenthood or in i mean there's there's no room for competition there's uh, it's it, it's only collaboration otherwise there is probably something wrong you know if i think i'm going to be you're competing competing against yourself and the motivation should not be like how can i how can i win this it's just about being it's it's about more, bigger things yeah so it goes back to that that initial question so what are we competing about and what game are you in um, and i don't think parenthood or the familyhood is is an area for competition yeah I, I totally agree yeah i think that um in, in affections and emotions and so on i don't think uh, um competition is necessarily a healthy thing but i also think in areas like um you know uh knowledge science you know th there may be healthy competition within it but uh, you know you know people striving to be the first to have discovered something um, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to, uh, you know, if your motivation to find a new, you know, cure for something or, uh, you know, something to revolutionize energy or I, I mean, I would hope that people have this. Obviously, you've got financial incentives, but I would hope that, you know, people are looking to contribute, make a positive contrib contribution to the world or solve world problems and so on. And. So I'd hope in those cases there's more cooperation than competition. Um, and going back to the original talking about Darwin and this survival of the fittest, when I was, you know, when I when I've traveled to places or you're in nature, I, I was really, it, it, it really was something I contemplated when I was uh, in Africa. And you know, that's where you see nature is, you know, kill or be killed and so on. But I saw yeah. a ton of cooperation, you know, I saw, you know, these these ox with the ox peckers and they're they're taking the parasites off of the their, their skin or, you know, you, you see the lines that actually they, they kill the weak and the infirm. And, and so the herd yeah. stays healthier. Um, so I see within nature that there's just so much interdependence that I see far more cooperation than I see competition. And um, so you know, maybe that's just my perspectives of seeing the world. Um, but I, so, mm. so th those are the, those are the things to think about, you know, when I, when I see is there, these are definitely areas we don't want competition. Uh, and, and so, so th I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind that competition isn't the solution in every situation and f to, you know, the, the way to get the most out of people's potential or the most um, impressive results or, the the the, mo the most beneficial outcome it's uh, i just don't yeah. think competition is necessarily the best thing and i don't don't think it's black and white but i think those are things uh, to think about mm. actually just made me think about maybe next time we can talk about collaboration there and then dive into that and see if there's any if it's is collaboration always good i don't know that can be a different angle to it that we could explore mm -hmm. that that's an interesting one mm -hmm. and, and as someone who enjoys writing um yeah or creative endeavors like that there are people who <laughs> who are good when they collaborate and there are people who um mm -hmm. are better solo but uh again that's an area i don't think competition is all that great so um, no. cool all right well maybe that's a good place to to wrap it up um it'd be it'd be interesting if you guys uh, want to leave comments it'd be interesting to know what you think about competition um and give us your feedback but uh yeah hopefully this has been insightful helpful and maybe even caused you to reflect and think about how comp competition affects your own life and are you competing for the right things um is competition bringing out the best in you and uh yeah hopefully we've given you some some reason to think about that so yeah. thanks for engaging me in this topic toby <laughs> yeah thanks peter thanks for bringing it up it was really fun cool okay well look we we will we'll, we'll be taking another bit of a you're, you're you've got a tunnel travel you're off to china um yeah. so we, we probably won't be able to connect for another conversation for a bit so um for our listeners you know thanks for putting up with our longer pauses in the last couple of months um but you know we do this for for fun and hopefully to help people but at the end of the day um our, our day jobs uh take precedent so we don't always find the time to connect but um but we'll definitely be back 
uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to whether collaboration or some other topic is going to be on the top of your mind for our next one. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay thanks Toby have a great one thanks for everyone for listening and we'll talk to you again soon all right thanks